Hello? Oh shit, I don't have to do this anymore because I bought this new DJI mic. And so, I don't gotta sing shit anymore. Except I got the settings all wrong, so for this video, it's going to sound kind of aggressive. My apologies. You guys, what's up? <laughs> Welcome to 2024. Technically, I already uploaded my first video of 2024, but it's just I want to get that video out of the way. I haven't sat down in front of the camera just to talk with you guys by myself in a while. And also, I want to try some products that I bought last year on a whim, but never fucking used. My skin is fucking dry right now though, so um, I need to do my skincare first. I got these from South Korea, but I'm really just trying to use this shit up. Belief Toner, as usual, go to Ampil from Skin Chonsa, and also Belief Cream. A few weeks ago, I did the whole uh, Edwards Beauty Bar event. Went over really, really well. A lot more people excited up than I expected. So what I decided to do was let's make this sort of like almost like a permanent thing, or at least try it out by basically having a sort of pop-up thing where I do y'all's makeup if you sign up for a fee. <laughs> Help you with your makeup, do your makeup for an event, shit like that. Obviously it will be in Seoul for now, but probably gonna do expand it later on to other countries. So that's the main goal. But it's done in, cool huggle. Oh my God, I, I tried these cotton sheets from Daiso because they sell them in a box of like a thousand pieces. And these are better for just like the ones that you stick on your face. I don't think it's really good for a uh, takto, wiping your face with toner. If you watch the Double D podcast, I talk about how I've been like buying supplies for this pop-up shop thing. So uh, I'm having fun with that. Before I started filming this video, I was trying to think like, oh, should I reflect on my 2023 girl? All I did was film content the entire year. I feel like being a YouTuber, I don't, I mean, a lot of people are always asking like, oh, what do you, what's your future like? What do you think about your future? But I'm not, originally, I'm not the type of person to even be thinking about, girl, I'm not, I'm not Raven. Like I'm not thinking about the future. I stay in the present, you know what I mean? So when I think about how my 2023 was, there was probably a lot of great moments, but I can't fucking think of a early onset of dementia is kicking in. And so I talk about Yamsuzo yeah, all the time, but it's especially when you're applying your cream. I literally be using like this much. This is more important rule for when you're wearing makeup because you don't want, because skincare can also get cakey. I think if you're going to be bare face, I don't think it matters too much. Also using a little bit of Tokubo lip mask. Um, you can probably see it, but I got uh, Agus High fillers recently on a fucking whim. If you think it looks weird, don't worry, because I think it looks weird too. But it's because the bruising is still there. I got it done twice. The first one was the initial, like, you know, putting it in. And the second time, the, the touch up to use up the rest of the syringe of the filler, the filler material. The first time was not bad at all. Second time, it's just the bruising was really bad for some reason. Did it hurt? Not really. I got numbing cream, but as time passed by, obviously the numbing cream is gonna wear off, and that's when it's you really start to feel like the pricking of the needle and like the injection of the filler. But overall, it didn't hurt that much. But the bruising is pretty bad, especially on this eye, so it's still kind of there. It's mostly just to even out my under eyes, because you guys know, y'all see my zoomed in face all the fucking time. One side is always uneven. And he was telling me one side in general, one eye, has less fat than this eye. And so that's why there's unevenness in general. I still can't really tell right now with the bruising, but... We'll see. I bought a bunch of Dinto. You guys know I love the Dinto foundation. Fucking sucks that it literally comes in two shades of like light beige. Cause that formula is fucking amazing. But girl, I'll scroll on Instagram. You know the ads that be popping up. I can be getting a lot of hot trainers, hot dudes promoting their online shopping malls in Korea or random beauty ads. And in this random beauty ad, Dinto, um, honey, who was this? It was one of the members from The Boys. Young Hoon in the Young Hoon. Apparently he's a model for uh, Dinto this little photo card that they gave me. I was interested in trying some of their other stuff anyway, so I picked up their new version of their Blur Finish Foam Primer. This originally I tried from Style Cream, but that shit was kind of weird. I guess they kind of updated it. I got their Cushion Foundation because I love their fo liquid foundation so much, and I wanted to try their Blur Fixing Finish Powder Pack because I feel like Dinto is so good at making base products for blurring the skin. I don't really have issue with pores. It's more just like my acne scarring, so I'm more of a matte finish type of girl. So let's try this. Uh, foam primer. The original one, it comes out as a foam, but it immediately melts down. Like it looks like melted ice cream. I think the whole foam thing is kind of a gimmick. So, hold on. Hello. I'm filming a video right now. Do you want to say hi? Hi. Ha! I love how this is the photo that pops up when you... <laughs> say bye to the girls. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> Everyone in the comments, let us know if you want to see another iconic collaboration between the two of us. Because oh she needs to make a comeback on my channel. Oh my god, vlog with the 
boyfriend and the ex-boyfriend ever. Oh, duh, yeah. Let's try this because I feel like the original was so gimmicky. It was like, <gasps> well, it's foam. They weren't lying there. Do I just... It smells like aerosol. That sort of chemically alcohol smell that comes out of aerosol cans. Oh, no. My worry with a lot of blurring primers is that, you know that, that silicone-y dry feeling that as you're applying it, you can feel the dead skin coming up? But this shit is creamy. I can feel it smoothing out and filling in all the pores, but it's almost like I'm applying a really, how do I describe it? Like almost like a thick, thick, rich, but matte moisturizer. I think this would be good for if you need that uh, smoothed out canvas, but your skin is more on the dry and dehydrated side. This is the perfect texture. A lot of the newer pore primers are much better these days. They're not as drying, they're more moisturizing, but amongst the ones I've tried, this is the most moisturizing I've tried. I have this Kevin Aquan Essential Skin Enhancer that's a really famous product uh, because it comes in a pot. It's like a cream concealer, cream foundation. It's famous because it's so fucking pigment you need like literally a needle head point size just to cover like one part of your face it's crazy i dumped some out on here in my palette this is the uh skin food salmon dark circle concealer i always use but this is the kevin aquan one and this particular shade is very orangey so it's great for covering um beards and the fact that it already has so much coverage is one thing, but because of that really orange color, it will help color correct this blueness of my beard. Cause this shit, oh my God. I got so far five proper sessions of laser hair removal. I think I need to go for another 10 just to get the last bits. She's starting to come back. This is the Blur Finish One Chew Cushion and I love their, they have two liquid foundations. They have like a dewy one and they have the One Chew Blur one. And that one, oh girl, she gets my skin looking right. She gets my skin looking right. Ooh. First impression, the puff is so hard. It feels super nice and velvety, but it's quite thin and it's very takake, very really stiff. Cause we don't too much, we wanna build it up. Always use the, the, see, look how much sh fucking shit comes out. You have to be careful with these new cushions because when they're brand new, so much foundation is sitting on top. Ooh. I mean, I'm assuming this is just the same formula as their liquid foundation, but in a cushion form. And right now it's applying super nicely. The puff is so stiff, it's making it hard to apply like around my nose. Other than that, the phone was fucking beautiful. And I was worried with a really stiff fucking sponge like this, that you would get like the, the marks around your face. When you're trying to blend it in, the edges of the puff cause like lines and dents in your foundation. But because it's a matte foundation, it dries fast enough that it prevents any of that like lineage. And that's how the, ooh, holy. This before, this is after. I'm gonna use powder, but not until later. I'm gonna let it sit by itself. Kunde, I can definitely tell, even just the way I'm, it's blending out and how it feels right now. If you often have dead skin and you really have really dry, dehydrated skin, this is definitely not gonna be for you. Unless you prep your skin really well, this shit is gonna look so dry on you uh, throughout the day. But right now, the skin is looking right, yes. I have the powder, and I set my the powder until later, but uh, I am gonna first do a little bit on my brows. I am meeting up with uh, Sean later. Sean, Sean Solo. It's Sean Solo on Twitch, which I don't know what the fuck he's gonna do because he's on Twitch, but in Korea, Twitch is being, Twitch is, you can't use Twitch starting in February. So I'm like, what are you gonna move on to? He hasn't told me, but I'm, I'm assuming he's probably gonna move on to maybe like probably YouTube live. Contouring, okay. Kaleidos, Kaleidos was really sweet. In December, they were like, hey, it's Christmas soon. As a Christmas gift, we wanna send you some stuff. Anything you need to stock up on? And I was like, yes. Yes, I do. I literally asked them to send me like all my most used lip products from them because I use a lot of the lip products. They're Cloud Lab Lip Clay as like base for lips and also their contour, like basically this contour, contour stuff because I'm doing that pop-up makeup thing. So they have contour shades from really fair to really, really deep. So I was like, girl, send me all that shit. So they sent me out everything. Um, so shout out to Kaleidos because the quality of the powders is so fucking good as well. So this is their Symphony Contour Trio and it comes with two 
obviously it comes with two contour shades. The middle one is more of like a nose contour because it's more gray. And the outer one is more of a warmer bronzy color. It's still more on the cool tone side, but it's more, it's warm enough to use here because sometimes if the outer part is looking too gray, sometimes it looks like more like a beard or like a like sideburn. This has a little bit more warmth to make it look more natural on the side of the face. And then here there is a matte highlighter, which you can use to kind of add volume to parts of the face that you want to add volume to for the bridge of my nose. I'll put it here sometimes to help with smile lines because this part of my face looks really sunken in. You can also use it here. Oh, I also like to use it here sometimes. So 3CE came out with a collaboration with this. I don't know if it's a collection or if a collaboration, but it's their Smiley collection. The mirror I got, and they gave this to me as a gift. The eyeshadow palette. I bought the lip tint and I bought the blush right here. It's all obviously for the cool tone girlies. <laughs> so if you're a soft summer, <laughs> then this shit will look cute on you. Even winter, if you're cool winter, uh, these darker colors are amazing for uh, deep winters. However, I do believe they do actually sell the eyeshadow palette not in the special edition packaging. I bought this because I want to try it, but like I told you guys, it was just sitting there, so I forgot what this looked like. And when I saw this at Olive, I was like, oh my God, it's the new Cool Tone palette. You need to pick it up, bitch. It's the exact same fucking eyeshadow palette. Ashy Ash. I guess it is part of the permanent collection. So if you can't find this, don't worry. I was on TikTok and there's one, there's one girl I follow and she does a lot of sea beauty stuff and she'll often recreate looks that she saw on Xiao Hongshu. But there was one girl I was like, oh my God, I need to find the original creator and perusing on Xiao Hongshu, I was able to find her. Turns out I actually followed her already. And it's this look. And I was like obsessed. And I was trying to look at the eyeshadow that she was using. And I realized I literally have the eyeshadow that she was using. It could be that the overall video is very cool tone. So it looks a little bit, it looks slightly different, but I'm pretty sure it's this palette. So that's what I'm gonna use today. I'm gonna start off with this as my base shade actually. Oh my God, wait, let me fucking, let me put some powder on my lids first so they don't, they don't crease. Oh, and also, let me do this. I'm gonna use this Sigma eyeshadow base primer stick. And it looks like this. It's a really creamy eyeshadow stick, but it's great for covering up the, the bruising under my eyes for uh, from this Exocell filler. But also, even if you don't have bruising under your eyes, if you want to use this to emphasize your eggy side before you do your eggy side makeup, it works really well. Just blend it out with my finger. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh shit, remind me to wear my lenses. I always fucking forget my contact lenses. Actually, let me let me fucking do that shit right now. Oh, okay. Better. Take the same base shadow, just under the eyes like that. Girl, this side looks fucked. <laughs> Holy shit. And then I usually put uh, my dark, the second darkest shade like out on the outer corner here, but I'm just gonna the friends. Uh, I'm gonna do what the girl did in the video and actually use it on here, the center. Honestly, if you have monolids, uh, this is the technique I would do anyway. So that is, ooh. I'm gonna take a little bit of this really bright lemony colored concealer. It looks really messy, but it doesn't matter because um, I'm going to use this bright ivory shade in the palette just to brighten it up that inner corner. This will give it something to stick to. Jojoa. I'm gonna mix the two base shades I used earlier and very lightly here. I have to get really close to the lashes because if I if I make that line too wide going down, it will look too much for my eyes and will look make me look tired. So I really need to keep that line skinty, skinty. There is shimmer in here, right here. Kunde, I love the shimmer that she used in the video because I have that <laughs> palette. And that one is also from Kaleidos, and it's something I rarely get to use. So, but when I saw her use it, I was like, I need to use it in that way. It's this palette, this shade, and, but this shade is so powerful. So I'm literally just tapping like the lightest touch. <gasps> Holy, oh, oh. 
That is the stuff of dreams. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? Travel the world in the 70s. Who am I? Let's put a little bit on the Egusal too. Oh, that's so gorgeous. Bruh. It's good to, after you do your eye makeup, whether it's dark or light, um, go in again with your cushion or your foundation or conceal whatever you used. And I just lightly touch up under the base here. Because sometimes, especially with darker eyeshadow, it can make it look dirty under your eyes in a way. I kind of want to take a mix of the two pink shades, the outer part of my eye right here. Because I got Eggusa filler, it really added a lot of height to my eye, and I prefer more like elongated eye. So if I just leave it like this, it kind of makes my eye look really round, which it's not a bad thing. I just, I, I want to keep it longer. So I'm going to extend the outer part like this. Kunde, I'm also going to do eyeliner right now, which is unheard of for me, right? If you guys are familiar with the brushes I be using, like the, these Picasso brushes, they do have, I believe they own this brand, Pro 8, and they're well known in Korea uh, for their eyeliners. This is what they originally look like. Stay on gel eyeliner. Th this shit does not fucking come off. I have this in the deep black shade and the dark brown shade. Very popular at the makeup shops in Korea. But recently, they updated the packaging and honey, she's looking cunty as fuck. Yo! Do you see what a fucking upgrade that is? And they designed it so that you can actually use the lid as a... I mean, you can do the same thing with this, but they made this so it's like a palette. It has a bit of like a concaveness to it, so you can use your brush to wipe off on the, on the lid. But these are actually two new shades. Oud Brown. It's a soft, warm brown. Very good for natural, everyday looks. And this is the cool tone version of that, the Mute Brown, number four. This is what the original deep black and the dark brown look like. So you can see the tone on there. These are much deeper. The dark brown is so dark, it almost comes off black on your eyes, depending on your coloring. So they were selling a set on uh, Olive Young that comes with this dual-ended brush, which has lids nicely. One end is like this. And the other end is also a flat liner brush, but it's more at an angle. It does hurt a little bit doing the waterline though. So I'm actually going to take this Oki brush. Oki, Miss uh, Taeyeon's makeup artist. She has this eyeliner brush that she made. And this is perfect for um, just doing the, the waterline. But a tip I wanted to show you guys was I saw a makeup artist doing this with a band-aid. So I was like, why not use just regular scotch tape? So I'm going to take scotch tape and put it on the thumb here. And that's gonna be my little palette. So it's easier to, I don't have to like mess with, try to wipe off permanent gel eyeliner on my hands. I scoop some out and just put on my little palette, my little tape palette. And it's really important when using brushes like this that you go with the way the bristles are. Like you're wiping it onto the bristles. You're not stabbing it. Right before I put this away, I'm gonna wipe it off on a wet wipe because you really need to get off that excess gel liner on the brush. I just use a wet wipe, but you, it's better to use like a cleansing oil or like micellar water. Get that in, I'm gonna go back to this one because I like to use this to create the actual wing because it's much easier, I find. To be honest, you're not really gonna see it because the tone of the eyeliner is so similar to the tone of the eyeshadow. Yeah, you really don't see that. Sorry. <laughs> and this, you literally just peel it off. Hmm. And it's also, this is great for also um, eyelash glue instead of putting it on your hand directly. And just to finish off the eye makeup, I'm gonna quickly use this Judy Doll mascara I found. It's the Lash Power Mascara. And I really like it for the fact that the bristles are tiny as fuck. And it's a really clean mascara, so it doesn't clump my lashes together. It literally just emphasizes each lash. I'm loving the eye makeup today. Okay, now we can finally use powder. And I think, I mean, it's still looking pretty nice and matte. I, the thing is, when I'm filming, I start to sweat. And so that's why you might see a little bit of glow still. But if I'm not filming, usually matte foundations will be matte on me. But I'm just gonna use it on. It comes with a puff on the bottom. Very convenient. But I feel like it'll be too much. So I just want a light layer of this. Oh, that is blurring as hell. Okay, I'm gonna put some here because I'm gonna, I forgot to contour my face, but... 
It just took down the shine. And that's what I want, so. If y'all remember my fucking brand View 92 that I had like literally one or two products from, I was gonna come out with brushes and this is the sample of one of them. It's like a dual fiber brush, but I love this shit for, uh, this is not a unique kind of brush. And lots of brands have this type of brush, but I love using this for adding contour to the here because it blends and it applies at the same time. So, um, and it diffuses. So if you have trouble with um, getting splotchy like bronzer or contour on your face, this could work even for blush as well. Lately, I literally just add it to the actual jawline. Like I don't try to go too far in. This is the 3CE Face Blush in Kinda Shy, a really grayish, indie pink, mauve colored blush. I saw this brush at Daiso, and y'all remember the tag cushion? Still love my tag cushion, use it all the time. Uh, they have brushes, they have a blush brush, or what is this? Vegan contour, but I love the shape of this because it's small but angled, so it's so perfect for just putting your blush here, and it's vegan apparently. It was like Five bucks, I think? It was only five dollars. Less than five, less than five, it was like four bucks. So I've been loving to use this for blush. <gasps> oh my God. The brushes are actually quite flimsy. So I was thinking, oh, you know, this might not apply blush very well because it's so weak, the bristles, but applies and blends like a fucking dream. Chuck them out if you want to put a little bit of highlighter. My friend Eddie Sun, he went to Japan recently and I told him to buy me one of those Cezanne, Cezanne? Cezanne? This brand. Uh, highlighters that are quite popular. This is like drugstore brand, so it's really cheap. Just, uh, oh, holy, holy moly. And that's it. There she is. I think there's two colors that came out with this collection, but I only bought one. Uh, this is their Velvet Lip Tint in Fade In. And the shade looks like this. A really deep rosy pink. This would be perfect for if you are a winter deep, it would look really pretty. And also I think Autumn Warms can use it if you want more like cool tone makeup. Oh, and also there, there's a, this cute little brush, multi brush that came with uh, the thing that they gave us like an extra gift. It's like this fat little blending brush. Ooh. I literally got lip filler to correct my lip shape and make my lips a little bit bigger. So there's no reason for me to try to really like I grow I still be going over because I'm so used to the overlining techniques at this point that sometimes I go overboard so that's so pretty but I have to use it sparingly because I know I've tried it before I'll like go in and uh, it's too deep for my skin tone I guess it's a good color for a variety of different skin tones but for me I have to use it lightly otherwise it can look a little bit overpowering yeah there's the finished look y'all the longer my hair gets the more I'm starting to look like sort of like an alternative Asian girl you know the types of Asian girls that don't wear any foundation and they just wear graphic eyeliner and they have like wolf haircuts and they kind of dress androgynously. I feel like I'm giving that vibe. Oh. Or just like lipstick lesbian. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go get some coffee. I hope you had a good New Year's. Here's some more fun content. I'll see y'all later. Bye. Better, better, better up. Uh.